Hey everyone, Kevin here from River City Graphics. Today we're going to be talking about how to use the animate and CSS functions in jQuery. So, let's get started. So here in Dreamweaver we have our files that we've been working on in the past few videos. Now if you haven't seen those videos I recommend that you go and check those out because we will be building off of those concepts. So what we're going to be discussing today is how to use the CSS and animate functions within jQuery. So to get started I'm just going to go over to my script.js file and I have taken out all of the code that we've discussed in the past videos except for our document ready function because all of our jQuery that we want to actually run needs to still be within that. So I've also come over to our HTML file and I've taken out the onward list that was here so we basically just have an empty body tag to put whatever we want to play with uh, in this video in there. So what I'm going to take and put in there is a div tag, just an empty div tag. Okay. So once you have your div tag made, go over to the head part of your div tag and just add an ID in and this is going to be box. So what we're going to do is basically take and style this out using CSS, but we're not going to use a CSS sheet like you normally would. We're going to actually take and target this and add our CSS styles through jQuery. Now, you might be wondering why you would do that. There are cases within jQuery that you want to actually add styles to an object and you don't really have access to use the CSS style sheet. And so I'm going to be showing you how you can actually do that with jQuery today. So now that we have our ID of box, I'm just going to come over to our script.js and we now need to target that, uh, that div by using its ID of box. So I'm just going to take and put a dollar sign, open close parenthesis, inside of these parentheses, I'm going to take and put hashtag box or pound sign box. And that is going to be selecting basically the ID that we have over here. It's corresponding with that. So what I can do then is after um, we get outside of our parentheses, put a period dot, so it's dot CSS. And then open close parenthesis semicolon. So inside of our parentheses, we'll also put an open and close curly bracket. And then inside of the curly brackets, we'll put two single quotes, a colon, and then two more single quotes. So this might look a little intimidating, but it is the same thing forwards as backwards. So just make sure that you have your syntax correct. So what we have here is basically the first set of single quotes is going to be our CSS property. And the second set of single quotes is going to be the value. So what we can do is take and to illustrate that, just take and put in height which is a CSS property I'm sure everyone has used. And then we'll take and put in 100 pixels. So now we've made this box, this div, 100 pixels tall. So now, most cases, you want to actually add more than one CSS property. So after our last single quote, I'm just going to take and put a comma, a space, two single quotes, a colon, and then two single quotes. So that's basically the syntax that you need to remember. Whenever you want to add in another CSS rule, you just take and put a comma, and then you do the exact same syntax and then after that you can put another comma and keep going adding more and more rules to your uh, to your object. So what we can do here is take and add a width and we'll make that 100 pixels and then we can take and also uh, so that we can see this we'll give it a background color. So I recommend definitely taking and typing out all of this uh, when you actually are starting out because I would you don't want to miss out on some kind of single quotes or something. So putting the single quotes, the colon, and the single quotes ensures that you get the syntax right uh, every time. So again, we're just going to continue with this. Okay, background color, and we're just going to make it black. So we'll get the hex code value there. Again, two single quotes, a colon, two single quotes. And then we'll take and for this one, we're going to make the position of this absolute so that we can actually animate this a little easier later. So I'm just going to take and put position and then over some, we'll take and put in here absolute. Okay, so now what we can do is take and go over and view this in Chrome so we can see what we have. So we'll preview this in Google Chrome and you can see now we have a black box right here that is completely styled using jQuery. So if we take and go back over into our file and just to show you, if we take and comment this out, you can see that now we get nothing if we refresh the page. And that's because we're not using any CSS um, from style sheets. We're doing this all through jQuery, which is pretty cool. So what we're going to take and do next is actually take and start animating this box. So in order to do that, we need to take and select the box again. So I'm just going to take and copy and paste this. And then what we can do is take and put dot animate. And then open and close parenthesis and a semicolon. Now the reason that I paired CSS and animate together are one, uh, because they're pretty they're pretty close uh, in syntax. And so inside of these parentheses, we're going to take and put an open close curly bracket. Inside of the curly brackets, we're going to take and put a two single quotes colon and then two single quotes. So it looks exactly like how we started out the CSS syntax. 
So what you actually are animating are also CSS properties. So these two go together fairly well as far as uh, concept. So what we can actually do is start animating this and we're just going to animate the position of this. So what we need to do is since we've put this as an absolute position, we can use left, right, top, and bottom to actually move this uh, effectively. So we can take and say, if we wanted this to move right across the page, we're going to add a left basically um, to it. And so in the other part, we're going to take and put maybe, um, just put like 1000 pixels. So it's going to take and move left 1000 pixels, which is going to basically push it right 1000 pixels. So it's being pushed from the left. So if we take and go back over to Chrome and refresh this, you can see now we get a pretty snazzy animation of our box moving from the left to the right of our screen. It's moving over 1000 pixels. So that's pretty cool, but we do have some more options with the animate function. So I'm just going to come back over into Dreamweaver and what we can do is actually take and slow this down because that's pretty quick. So what you can do is after your curly bracket here, your ending curly bracket, you just take and put a comma and you can see it'll probably bring up these code hints for you. You can see the next thing that's bolded out here is duration. So that's going to be how long your animation actually lasts. Now it's in milliseconds, so you want to basically use a thousand for every second that you want it to be. So say that we want it to take one second, we'll put 1000. Now this doesn't need to be in quotes, so it'll show up red. So if we come back over here, you can see that it's now going to slow down because I think the default's like 500, so half a second. So now you you can see it's going a little bit slower. So really to emphasize this, we can take and jack it up to say like six seconds, so 6,000. Refresh this and now you can see it's kind of crawling across the page. So the next property that we can also use is to come down here and after our, after our time, so after our duration, we'll put another comma, a space, and then we'll put two quotes. And this is going to be easing if you see our code hinting here. So what easing basically is, is it's a way to change how your animation actually uh, happens. So you can do it linearly or you can do it where it's exponential and so it kind of speeds up over time. There's a lot of easing plugins that you can actually download to get some really cool effects such as bouncing and all kinds of things like that. But there are two default ones to the animate function, which are linear and also swing. So we'll look at linear first. If we come over here to Chrome, you can see that it's moving at the exact same pace, obviously a linear pace, all the way across the page. So very static, very um, organized, very linear. So now if we take and go to swing, you can see that we're going to get a little bit of a different movement. If we refresh this, you can see that it kind of starts out slow and then it progressively gets faster as it goes across the page because it's kind of swinging into its animation. So you can use those to get some pretty cool effects. So the last thing that we're going to talk about is a callback. So if we put a comma after our last single quote here on our easing, we're going to see callback right here. And the callback is basically what happens when the animation is finished. So in order to illustrate this, we're going to write the word function open close parenthesis, open curly bracket, hit enter twice, and a close curly bracket. So now we've basically written a function for our callback. And so down here in this, um, this nesting that we've created here, we can take and write what happens when it's finished animating. So it goes all the way across the screen. What do we want to happen when it's done? In a lot of cases, you can just leave the callback off. You don't actually need to have it. You just want it to animate once and then let it go. And in some cases, you will want it to actually do something. So what we can do is just use our good old alert I'm just going to say alert, open, close, parentheses, semicolon, and then inside of these parentheses, we'll take and put, say, done animating. Don't know why I wrote that in all caps. Apparently, it's pretty exciting. So we'll take and come over here into Chrome, and now you can see it animates all the way across the screen, and when it gets finished, bam, done animating. Our alert comes up, so you can see that now you can pretty powerfully um, determine what actually happens next once this animates here. So once it gets here, then maybe we could write another animation so that it moves down the screen and then it moves back. And so we could have it kind of going in a square or a rectangle or something like that. Or you might have it repeat itself. So once it gets finished, it repeats itself. And so it automatically goes back and starts over. Um, so there's all kinds of things you can actually do by using the callback, by using the easing, by using the um, basically just the CSS properties, you can animate opacity and you can animate height and width and all kinds of different things. So really the opportunities with animate and CSS in general are pretty endless. So I invite you guys to explore those and kind of get acquainted with those because we are definitely going to be using them as we get more complicated with our jQuery. So that's about it for this video. Hope you guys learned something. Uh, make sure that you guys subscribe, rate, and comment. I do have a new video coming out every week. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.